Hello. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the cross product or vectorial product. The cross refers to the symbol that we utilize when we write down such a product. However, vectorial product is a more appropriate name because it gives you a very clear indication as to what the result of this product is going to be. It's going to be a vector, obviously. As you can see, I have two vectors a and b that form an angle theta. The cross product between two v these two vectors, by definition, is going to be that vector that is orthogonal, as you can see, on both A and B. But let's define the cross product with symbols. So the cross product between A and B is going to be magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine of theta, this time. This portion is the magnitude, times N, with this uh, pointy hat because, well, again, this is a notation that you may encounter. This n gives you the direction, and it's a unit vector which is orthogonal on a and b, and since it's a unit vector, has a magnitude of 1. It doesn't add anything to the magnitude of this resultant, but gives it a direction. The way we determine the direction for a cross product between two vectors is by using the same right-hand rule that we know from uh, constructing the right-hand uh, coordinate system which I explained in the previous uh, lesson. So basically, if we rotate that vector A over B, gives us the upward direction for the resultant. So you can uh, tell that A cross B is not the same thing with B cross A. As a matter of fact, it gives you the opposite. But we're going to talk about the properties of the cross product a little later in this lesson. So, if that's the form for geometric vectors, Let's now see how um, we can express the cross product using algebraic vectors. So if we have two vectors A defined by A1, A2, A3 and B defined by B1, B2, B3, then the cross product between A and B is going to be this vector with the following components. The first one is A2, B3 minus A3, B2. The second component, the Y component, is A3, B1 minus A1, B3. And the last component, the Z component, is A1B2 minus A2B1. Of course, this is a little more complex than uh, what uh, you've encountered so far. But don't worry, I'm going to demonstrate that this result for you. First of all, the main part, as you can see, is the magnitude. The direction vector, we just know it has to be a vector that's perpendicular on both A and B. But let's see how we can calculate this magnitude. So the magnitude of the cross product uh, between A and B is by definition magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of theta. So I'm going to work on these expressions, both left and right, and uh, try to gradually get to that algebraic format that you've seen at the end in the last uh, screen. I'm going to bring uh, both expressions on the left and on the right to power 2. See if I can bring it to a form that I can actually work with. So the magnitude of the cross product between A and B at power 2 is going to be magnitude of A square, magnitude of B square, sine square of theta. We know that sine square of theta is 1 minus cosine square of theta, based on the fundamental trigonometric identity, and that's useful. We'll see why. So I'm going to rewrite everything and replace sine square of theta with 1 minus cosine square of theta. And let's expand the parentheses. So I'm going to have magnitude square of A times magnitude square of B minus, again, magnitude square of A times magnitude square of B times cosine square of theta. This expression, you recognize, is nothing else than the definition of the dot product between two geometric vectors, A and B, at power 2, however. Let's replace that expression with its equivalent. So I'm going to continue to say it's equal to magnitude square of A, magnitude square of B, minus the dot product between A and B at power 2. And now what I'm going to do is replace all these values with their algebraic correspondence. So the magnitude square of a vector A defined by those components A1, A2, A3 is going to be A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square. The same for the magnitude square of B, only that the components B1, B2, B3. And minus the dot product between two vectors A and B, we know it's A1, B1 plus A2, B2 plus A3, B3. 
and at power 2 because that's what we had earlier. Now I hope everybody knows how to expand these parentheses so I'm gonna take a1 square and multiply it with each of those terms in the second parentheses. I'm gonna do the same for the second term a2 square I'm gonna multiply it with each of the terms in the second parentheses and I'm gonna do the same with the third term a3 square multiply that with each of the terms in the second parentheses. On the second parentheses you can apply you see it's a square of a trinome so you either consider two of those terms to be one single term m and the last consider as a single term so make a perfect square and use the formula for that as we know m plus n at power 2 it's m square plus 2 mn plus n square that's just something simple that you don't have to make use of a new formula of a formula that you may not know or you simply use the formula of a trinom square which is equal to m square plus n square plus p square plus 2mn plus 2mp plus 2np let's perform all the operations I'm going to write down the result now let me see what I can uh, cancel out from all this expression there are a few terms that we can get rid of as you can see now from all these terms I'm going to select those that form a perfect square I'm gonna use separate colors to identify the three terms that form a perfect square and let me write those down in order so the first perfect square I identify to be a2 square b3 square minus 2 a2 b2 a3 b3 plus a3 square b2 square I'm going to identify another perfect square just in the same way using this blue color you can see I found three terms which I can write in order they're gonna become a perfect square in the next step and identify the last three terms that I'm gonna underline in purple and write them down as well you may wonder why did I choose this order we're gonna see in a moment because you could have chosen any other groups but I chose to select these ones so as I said before the first three terms as you can see are the perfect square a2b3 minus a3b2 at power 2 the second three terms are going to result into a3b1 minus a1b3 at power 2 and the last three terms are nothing else than a1b2 minus a2b1 at power 2 so I'm gonna write that down just like that and now since we actually want to make the connection to the vector this expression after all it's the magnitude square of the cross product between a and b so now if this is the square of a magnitude then we can identify that vector easily so I can write this as the magnitude of the vector a2b3 minus a3b2 the first component the second component being a3b1 minus a1b3 and the z component is a1b2 minus a2b1 this is the magnitude of that cross product between a and b now you may wonder why did I chose these groups of letters and why did I organize them in this order well obviously you, you can group them in any other configuration and find other vectors as well so this is not a unique vector however there is one more step that we have to take in order to prove that the definition for the cross product is correct as uh, the way I gave you because only one vector meets all the requirements let me call this vector C so I can easily refer to it so far we only identified the magnitude of this uh, cross product between A and B but in the next step this resultant vector the cross product between two vectors A and B has to be a vector that is orthogonal to both A and B so let me first rewrite that uh, vector C so we have it clear in front of our eyes so this C vector that we determined we have to verify that it's actually orthogonal on A and B well we're gonna take it one at a time so we're gonna demonstrate that 
C is perpendicular on A. And that is going to happen if the dot product between C and A is zero. And we can calculate the dot product between C and A. So the dot product between C and A is going to be, let's rewrite these vectors with their algebraic form. And how do we know the dot product behaves? We have to multiply the first component of first vector to the first component of the second vector plus the y component of the first vector times the y component of the second vector plus the product between the z components of those vectors. So let's perform this and I'm going to do it directly and reorganize the letters also. So I'm going to have a1, a2, b3 minus a1, a3, b2 plus a2, a3, b1 minus a1, a2, b3 plus a1, a3, b2 minus a2, a3, b1. What we identify here is that these terms are cancelling each other out and the other ones too and these two as well. So the result is zero indeed. So C is perpendicular on A. Now let's do the same thing for verifying if C is perpendicular to B or in other words let's check if the dot product between C and B is zero. So let's calculate this a little faster since now we know what we are doing. The dot product between the C and B it's equal to a2b1b3 minus a3b1b2 plus a3b1b2 minus a1a3b1 b one b 2 plus a 3 b one b 2 minus a one b 2 b 3 plus a one b 2 b 3 minus a 2 b one b 3 And once again, let's see what we can cancel out. Well, as you see, they all cancel each other out. We are left with zero again. Which means that the vector C is indeed perpendicular on both A and B. So since we confirm that C is perpendicular on A and C is perpendicular on B and the magnitude of C it's actually the magnitude of A cross B then vector C it's nothing else than the cross product between A and B. If you have any doubts about the other vectors that you can form please construct other C vectors take any other order of these components and see if those vectors verify the condition that they are indeed perpendicular on both A and B but you are not going to find other vectors other than this one to be um, satisfying the condition. That's why we have this definition for the cross product. Now let's move on. The whole point is that you are able to utilize this formula in an algebraic format and it's kind of hard to memorize it the way it is. So there is a method that you can use to figure out right away what those components are of your uh, cross product in an algebraic format. It's a visual method in which you can determine these um, components. So let's organize the components of our vectors as follows. So I'm going to write first the unit vectors i, j and k and rewrite them once more. And now under e each of these unit vectors I'm going to write in order the components of those vectors a and b. So I'm going to have a1, a2, a3 and again rewrite them a1, a2, a3 same for B under it, B1, B2, B3, B1, B2, B3. And now let's start from I. I'm going to use these arrows to make it clear. What am I identifying? Here is this A2, B3 and then minus going back from the bottom to the top. That's what we take B2, A3 or A3, B2 as we can uh, change the order there. This is the first component, the x component, the one that corresponds to the i, the unit vector for the x-axis. The second component, I'm looking for the j unit vector, so it's going to be, follow the arrow, a3b1 and minus, reading from the bottom to the top, to go back to j, it's b3a1 or a1b3. And the last component, the z component, I'm going to look for the k unit vector and follow the arrow, a1b2 and going backwards towards K is B1, A2 or A2, B1. So it's minus A2, B1. And this is a visual way to uh, identify these components. One more thing that you should know about the magnitude of a cross product. As we know equals to magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine of theta, the angle between the two vectors. So this is the magnitude of A cross B but it also represents the area of the parallelogram defined by A and B.
let me construct a diagram so I can make it more clear for you what it represents. So if I have this vector A and B and the angle between them is theta, if I construct the parallelogram constructing some equivalent vectors with our A and B vectors, I'm also going to construct the height of this parallelogram, which I'm going to denote with H. Sine of theta in this right triangle is nothing else than H over magnitude of B. Or we can say that H is magnitude of B times sine of theta. And what is the area of a parallelogram? It's the base times the height. If we replace those with the values we have in this case, it's going to be the base is magnitude of A times the height is, which as determined earlier, magnitude of beta sine of theta, which is exactly the definition for the magnitude of the cross product between A and B. And that's why you can determine the area of a parallelogram using the cross product between two vectors. Based on the definition of the cross product, we also can uh, determine the angle theta by reorganizing that formula. So I can say that theta is the inverse of the sine from cross product between A and B over the magnitude of A times magnitude of B, which you recognize is the definition of the cross product reorganized to find theta. And this notation sine at power minus 1, it doesn't mean at power minus 1, it's the inverse of this sine. A more clear notation would be arc sine, but somehow in North America I've seen is not very popular, although the sine at power minus 1 is very confusing. So let's conclude this lesson with the properties for the cross product. For any vectors a, b, and c, and a scalar k, a real number, we have that the cross product between A and B equals to minus the cross product between B and A. So it's basically the opposite of that. So the cross product is not commutative. The second property, the cross product is associative. So the cross product between A and uh, B plus C is equal to the cross product between A and B plus the cross product between A and C. The cross product is also distributive. So if you have the cross product between A plus B and C, that's going to result in the cross product between A and C plus cross product between B and C. A fourth property. If A and B are non-zero vectors, the cross product between A and B is zero if and only if there is a scalar M, a real number, such that A equals to MB. In other words, A and B are two collinear vectors. And remember this expression, if and only if, which means that this expression is valid in uh, reverse order as well. So if A and B are collinear vectors, then their cross product is going to be zero. And the final property is that a scalar multiple of a cross product, we can rewrite as Ka cross product with B or A cross product with Kb. And with this, I'm going to conclude the lesson. Thanks for watching.